Hey everyone, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews. For today's show, I wanted to dive into the battery performance of the new Galaxy Watch 3, and I'm calling this a real world test because I really want to show you what the typical battery life is without having to compromise on its functionality. Because yes, there are ways that you can optimize the battery so that you can squeeze every minute you can out of it. I'm also going to show you what recommendation the watch makes for optimizing your power, and I'm going to also provide some of my own battery tips. But like I said, at least for the purpose of this review, I also want to show the kind of performance you can expect without having to disable the watch's functionality. Because if you're spending several hundred dollars on a smartwatch, then I'm sure it's because you want to use those smart functions that it comes with, otherwise you would just buy, well, a regular watch. Now let me first tell you some ways to optimize the performance of your watch. And to do this, you need to first open up your settings, scroll down your battery area, and then tap there to reveal your options. First, you can select your power mode, which comes with three different varieties. There's a standard mode, which is going to identify how much life you can expect without having to disable any functions. And again, this is just an estimate and not an exact figure because there's a number of different factors that will affect this estimate, including the style of watch face you have on, the brightness level of your display, as well as other functionality, but I'm going to go into more detail on that in just a bit. You then have a power saving option, which is going to disable your call functionality, your messages, as well as your notifications. In this case, you're basically doubling your battery life, and if you can live without having to pick up calls and getting messages, then enabling this one isn't too bad, but I wouldn't have this power saving mode on all the time for me personally. I would probably utilize it if my battery life under standard usage drops below 20% and I don't have the ability to charge. Maybe I'm out and about, for example, and I just need to extend the battery until I get home. So this one is a good option for that. The last option is not one I would ever activate as it literally strips all functionality from your watch other than of course telling the time. It's like removing the smart part of your smart watch and for me this just isn't realistic. But hey, if you're someone that just wants to see the time or maybe you have like less than 5% battery life left and you really want to extend it as much as possible, then this is an option for you to activate that feature. Okay, the other feature you have access to is to optimize your battery, which if activated will automatically set certain parameters for different features of the watch, including disabling functionality such as the setting the screen timeout to the minimum 10 seconds, disabling your Wi-Fi, your GPS tracking or location, as well as your touch wake up feature. Again, you're going to save some power here, both in terms of display usage and location tracking, but these are features I still like to have on, particularly if I'm out of the house. You then have a related settings area where you can turn on or off individual settings. And for me, this makes more sense because then you're not forced into a category of a set amount of functions to deactivate. For example, you may want to keep on the GPS tracking, but turn off the wake up gestures, reduce the screen timeout durations, etc. So you do have more flexibility here in determining what features you want to keep on and which ones are not as important for you and can be deactivated. Now besides the features I already mentioned, you can also see some battery savings by reducing your screen brightness, having fixed watch faces versus animated ones, turning off your auto heart rate checks, closing apps running in the background, and playing with your display options for timeouts as well as the always on modes. And it's hard to give you an exact amount of battery saving here as turning all of them off, all of them on, or a mix of on and off is going to have different results, but expect to see at least a 15 to 20% power savings by altering any of these options. Okay, now let's recap the real world test. And for this example, I use the animated weather watch face from Persona, which also means my GPS location functionality remained on as I was getting constant updates for the weather. Plus I retained all the other standard functionality such as the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, always on mode. I had my screen brightness level to eight as well as auto brightness when outdoors. And I had my heart rate checks on every 10 minutes. And let me be clear that not only did I have all the functionality enabled, 
but I was also using the watch, meaning I was checking out the different settings, I was looking at the different widgets and functionality of them, as so I was basically flipping through the different screens. So yes, I was actually using my watch as I'm sure many of you do. So based on this usage, you can see that I only got two days of life out of it. Now I know that many of you are gonna be turned off by this, but keep in mind that this is a smaller size battery than the Galaxy Watch has, and it really was using all the functionality of the watch. So maybe you could consider this test the worst case scenario, meaning you're gonna get a minimum two days, but up to three days, depending on your own personal usage, settings, and watch faces used. Now for me, even two days doesn't bother me much with heavy usage because I charge my watch every night already. And I like using the smartwatch and its full capabilities. So I'm willing to sacrifice some battery life over the functionality and features that it already comes packed with. Anyways, I hope you found this test as well as these battery tips useful and let me know in the comments below what kind of battery life you're seeing with your Galaxy Watch 3, whether that be the 45mm or the 41mm version. Thanks again for watching our review and make sure you smash that like and subscribe button as it really helps both the channel and the video in terms of ranking. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you in our next episode. Until then, take care.